Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Good morning, IPC Hebron. Praise God. We have reason to rejoice. The, the Lord who created all of the universe sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for us and gain the victory over the devil. And uh, that is what we were just singing about. We've been studying continually from the new and living way which we will continue today. We know that we have studied from the new covenant, the new birth, the new heart, the new fruit, the new family, the new purpose, and currently for the last few weeks, we've been studying from the new heavens and the new earth, the new heavens and the new earth, the new kingdom, the eternal kingdom that the Lord will establish on earth. I know many of you have been tuning in also for the last week, for the convention that's been taking place in Kumbanad, which is also talking about the heavens and the earth, the kingdom uh, that the Lord will establish once and for all. So hopefully you were all blessed by that. You know, Psalms 20, uh, 24 says, Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord invincible in battle. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the king of glory enter. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of heaven armies. He is the king of glory. There's a couple of things there that it says that he is the, uh, the, the Lord that is invincible in battle. And then it says that he is the Lord of the heaven armies. He is the king of glory. So today, uh, for today's message, the title that I've given it is the king of glory. All he does is win. The king of glory. All he does is is vid or win. And so the topics to be discussed that's assigned to me today is uh, talking about uh, connecting Genesis chapter 3 uh, and Revelation 19 to 22, crushing the head of Satan. Talking also about the line of Judah who will win the final battle and get us the ultimate victory. The unholy trinity uh, that is destroyed forever and God's eternal kingdom that will be established forever. And how we as believers in Christ, blood brought saints by the blood of the Lamb, we stand as victors and not as victims. That seems like a lot to cover, but I will try to simplify it and make sure that even the youngest ones can understand. So if you go to that picture, you see that in Genesis 1-1, God created all of mankind, all the things of this universe, all the things of this world, Right? And everything was good, uh, and God rested. In Genesis 1 and 2, there was no evil in the new world that he had created. And then we know that Satan, in the form of a serpent, uh, deceived Eve. And then Adam, Adam and Eve, our forefathers, and sin entered the world. And from then on, the first, since the first Adam sinned, uh, humanity has been in this predicament where we are uh, sinful mankind. Even a baby born in, into the world is uh, uh, stained with that original sin of the first Adam. And there needed to be a new way. And God in his infinite wisdom and plan had uh, created a way that he talks about even in Genesis chapter 3. And we see uh, from then on the Lord has his plans in motion to redeem mankind and to defeat Satan once and for all. So in order to understand this, we need to first learn a little bit about the story of Lucifer. Who is Satan and who is this Lucifer? In Hebrew, the word is Hallel, Hael, which means brightness. That designation referring to Lucifer means the morning star or the bright star, which is presented in Isaiah, where it says, how are you fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn? In Isaiah 14, uh, 12 through 14, we can see that. And then again in Ezekiel, it says that Lucifer was a, 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 an angel, an important angel, a cherub, an anointed cherub, and he uh, had a unique position he had one of the highest positions uh, 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 in the uh, army of angel armies of the Lord. He had uh, the job uh, that was uh, desirable, but because of his evil desire, he said, I will, I will. And because of his sinful nature, he wanted to become greater than God. 
You see that in Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, uh, it, Lucifer says, I will ascend to heaven. I will ri raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the, mount of the assembly of the hinds of Zaphon. I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. You see there, I will, I will, I will by Satan. He was not willing to be uh, doing his job. He wanted to take over and be greater than the living God. And God uh, sent Satan, Lucifer, uh, down with a third of his angel thrown out of heaven. And they were put uh, down to earth. And we see that in order to get revenge on God, he took the form of a serpent and went and destroyed our first grandmother, Eve, by telling her, did God really say that? Did, did God really say that? The same kind of question that God, uh, him in trouble, uh, saying, uh, if you eat that, you will become like God. You will know uh, the, the good and evil, and you will become like God. So this deception, even before the creation of man, uh, the devil existed, uh, Lucifer who was thrown down, and he is now coming to our first parents, Adam and Eve, and deceiving them. And we see that Satan is the principality behind the powers, uh, the corrupt powers of this world system, which is referred to as Babylon in Revelation. It's not just a literal place, but the corrupt system of the world, the power behind the evil of the past empires, as well as the current world leaders. He has many different names. Uh, we know Satan or devil or Lucifer, Balsib, uh, Bal Balsible, prince of the earth, uh, which says that the accuser of the brethren, there are many different names that are given to Lucifer. Why am I spending so much time on Lucifer in order to understand uh, what was accomplished on the cross and what will be accomplished at the end of time? We need to understand who the main players are in this battle. So in New Jerusalem, uh, when we end up in New Jerusalem, Satan will be defeated once and for all. After being bound up for a thousand years, he will be thrown into the lake of burning fire and he will be destroyed and we will have our time eternity with the Lord forever and ever at the very end but we need to know what happens in between when we talk about the kingdoms of God we know that there is the uh, past kingdom and God tried many different ways with conscience with judges uh, with um, um, uh, laws and many different ways to try to um, get man to be saved or to live according to his ways. But none of that was effective. And there needed to be the first coming of the Lord Jesus, the son of God who gave, his, gave up his glory in heaven and came down into the earth and lived a sinless life for 33 and a half years. He lived a sinless life in his private ministry uh, early on being obedient to the father that when he was baptized, the father was well pleased in him. But he also lived a sinless life during his ministry. And we see that he was the perfect lamb that was slain for us. And by his death, he gained victory over sin and shame and slavery that we had. But also by his resurrection, he has won victory over death. And he has won victory for each one of us. But there is also going to be an ultimate victory over Satan that will take place. And in the end of the millennium uh, reign, Satan will be defeated once and for all. And we will have an eternal state, a kingdom of God that will last forever. So we need to study a little bit about the Revelation timeline. We know that in the church age, uh, after Jesus had left on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down and, and was uh, poured out among his people. And we are currently in the period of grace or the church age. And what needs to happen next is the rapture. Uh, let me remind you that the coming of the Lord is at hand and the, the Lord uh, will come at any time. No one knows the time as pastor was talking about. We cannot put a date to it, but all of the end time prophecies are coming to pass and we know that it can happen any minute. It can happen the next hour. It can happen a years from now. We do not know, but we need to live uh, with knowing and be rapture ready at any time lest we be left behind. After the rapture takes place, there is a seven-year period where there will be the rise of the Antichrist and his mouthpiece, which is the false prophet, during the time of tribulation. 
The first three and a half years, he will be a good guy. And then afterwards, he will turn bad. And during a total of seven years will be the time of the tribulation, especially the last three and a half years. And then the Lord will come down on the Mount of Olives and split the sky. And he will establish a particular kingdom called the Millennial Kingdom, a thousand year reign of the Lord. And uh, that, that, at that battle, there will be the battle of Armageddon that takes place. At the battle of Armageddon, we see that the Antichrist, as, the, as well as the false prophet, is thrown into the uh, burning fire. But Satan is not defeated yet. He is just bound up and put into the pit for a thousand years. You might wonder, why did God not utterly destroy Satan at that point, the devil, uh, when he had the chance? But he only destroyed two out of the three of the unholy trinity at that time. But uh, he bound up Satan as well so that he was powerless. And during the millennial reign, we see that Jesus is reigning and the devil is bound up and no longer to be seen. At the very end of this thousand years, there will be a great white throne judgment where all the dead who died without Christ will be judged. And then we will see this eternal kingdom of new heaven and new earth. So the timeline of end time events, step by step, is one the rapture of the church, which is imminent, then we know that the rise of the Antichrist aided by the false prophet will take place. Then during the early part of tribulation, I believe is the battle of Gog, Magog, the first one. And then there will be a seven year tribulation period. There will be the abomination of desolation where the Jewish people will be scattered all over. Then there is the battle of Armageddon where the Lord comes down in a second coming and uh, uh, kills the Antichrist and the false prophet at the time of his the start of his millennial reign. And not only that, he will bind up Satan for a thousand years and there will be the judgment of the nations that Joe talked about last week. And then there will be a thousand year reign of peace on earth and there will be a last battle to kill Satan, the one out of three of the unholy trinity. And there will be a great white throne judgment for the people that have not accepted the Lord and there will be new heavens and new earth, and we will live with the Lord forever and ever. If there's any mistakes, Pastor John Varghese is a scholar at this. I talked to him this week to make sure, but if there's any errors, I'm sure he will be able to correct us here. Genesis 3.15 is uh, uh, the, where I would like to start. It's a, the theological ter term is a proto-evangelium, the first proclamation of the gospel where a savior is brought up in Genesis 3.15. What does it say in Genesis 3.15? It says there, are, there is going to be a time when the seed of, uh, of the woman will crush the head of Satan, and there will be a time when the Satan will be able to strike the heel of uh, the seed of the woman. So we see that there will be always enmity or ill will or mutual hatred open hostility between two parties here. We see the two parties that are involved in this fight. There is uh, God and his son Jesus, uh, 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 Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which is the Trinity. And there is an unholy Trinity between the Antichrist, uh, the false prophet, and uh, the devil that will come to be in the end times. So, but uh, particularly the leader of that, the devil, Satan, uh, is the one that this battle will be against. And the Lord, uh, God was prophesying in Genesis by saying that there, there, there will be a savior. And two messianic prophecies are seen there, that there will be the seed crushing the head of Satan, and Satan will only be able to strike the heel. And that talks about the promise of Jesus, his redemptive work and his victory over Satan. The seed talks about a virgin birth, son of man taking the form of a human being, how Jesus took the form of a human being. He was bruised for three days, so he was only temporarily hurt at the heel, but he was able to gain victory by rising on the third day and breaking the power of death and winning victory forever and ever. So with the cross, but not only with the cross, but with his resurrection three days later, Jesus crushed the devil's head, defeating him once and for all. And we see that even though Satan is the prince of this world and is the accuser of the believer, even today, 
we see that he is still active in the world in many ways, but he is a defeated foe because on the cross, the Lord has crushed his head. So Satan is walking around today pretty much brain dead, I would say, but at the same time, seeing like a lion, not the lion, but like a lion, who he might devour, as Peter says. So we need to be smart. We cannot uh, uh, love the things of Satan. We cannot love the things of this world. The things of this world, the music of this world, the many other things of this world will be attractive and shining to our eyes and will try to draw us in. But the word of God says that we need to resist the devil so, and flee from the devil. So we need to know that there is a battle taking place always between these two systems, the system of God and the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. And the question is, are we consciously aware of every decision that we make and know that there is a battle taking place? Remember in Ephesians, we studied that we should put on the whole armor of God, that the things of this earth is not as we see with our naked eyes. There is spiritual things behind the battles that are going on on earth. And we know that we stand with the victor if we accept the Lord Jesus and live for him. Amen. Then we see as we go on that there is uh, this battle and the devil like a roaring lion is going around to see who he might devour. But my specific topic today was the ultimate victory over the unholy trinity. And the unholy trinity is uh, trying to be or mimicking the trinity of God the Father, God the Holy, uh, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And then uh, at the end times, as we heard, after the rapture takes place, during the tribulation, there will be a man that comes forward as the Antichrist. And he will have a mouthpiece also, and his, names will, and his name will be the false prophet. And he will try to establish a one world religion, and he will try to entice the people of the world during the tribulation. You need a mark of the beast in order to uh, sell or buy things, right? So he is the beast, the Antichrist, and his mouthpiece is a false prophet. That is two of the three. Uh, and then you have the devil, Satan, or Lucifer that we already talked about. That is the unholy trinity. And so how did God in the end times defeat? Or how did Jesus, the Son of God, uh, God himself, defeat this unholy trinity? If you look in Revelation chapter 19 and you go into some more details, uh, I just have uh, the pertinent verses there. But if you want to go into details uh, and study it for yourself, Revelation 19, uh, if you study from uh, verse uh, 11 onwards, you could see that there is a um, heaven standing open. And then before me, there was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. And on his robe, we see later, it is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. We see that Jesus Christ himself will come. And then it says, And I saw a beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider of the horse and his army. So we see that the, uh, the enemy, the beast, the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth will come to battle against the Lord Jesus, as it says in Revelation 19. And we see that uh, what happens to them? Two of them, the two of them, specifically the Antichrist and the false prophet, will be thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, it says in verse 20. Verse 20. We see that first, that there will be uh, the Antichrist and the false prophet thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. At that very moment, uh, what happens afterwards is uh, seen that the devil, in Revelation 20 verse 10, we see that the devil is not killed at that very moment, uh, after, uh, that he is uh, bound up at that time. Uh, but later in Revelation 20 verse 10, we see that the devil is also defeated after the millennial uh, reign. Uh, we can see that as well. Uh, if you go into that portion right there, Revelation 20, verse 7 through 10, we see the ultimate defeat of Satan, his armies at Gog Magog, war number two. Uh, then there will be, when the thousand years has ended, Satan will be released from his prison and he will come out to deceive the nations once again and uh, will be at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. And their number is like the sand of the sea. 
Even though people have gone through this millennial reign of the Lord Jesus, we see that innate in mankind is this naughty by nature that uh, even after living with the Lord Jesus, there's going to be people as the number of the sands of the sea who will fight with the enemy. And he, uh, with Satan, who are deceived by Satan after these thousand years of the Lord ruling and Satan not being present. And uh, I believe, as we talked it out, it seems like the, for the thousand years the sa that Satan was bound up and not killed yet is so that Satan can come out and the people that were living through that millennial time frame could have the right to choose. And that's the beauty of the Lord. He doesn't make any of us ro uh, robots or make any of us follow him if we did not want to, uh, but it would be behoove you to follow him. And the Lord is giving choice or free will even to the people during that time frame to make that choice. Do you want to follow Christ who's been taking care of you over these millennial time frame? Or do you want to follow uh, the devil? And there will be many people that march up uh, on earth along with uh, uh, this devil. And they will surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. Uh, and fire will come down from up on high in heaven and consume them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet was already there a thousand years ago. So we see that once and for all, all three of the unholy trinity is annihilated. And they will be tortured, tormented day and night forever and ever. That is the end uh, of Satan and the unholy trinity. And then there will be the new heaven and the new earth after the white throne judgment. And that is what we are all looking forward to, children of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, really 22 to 26, there it talks about there is an order of this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the resurrection. We know that Christ was raised from the dead. And he is seated at the right, seating at the right hand of the Father at this very moment, interceding for us as our advocate, as Alan talked about. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. And the end will come when he turns the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler, authority, and power. We see that the Son, being obedient to the Father, has come down, taken the form of a man, and died on the cross for us. But at the very end of time, he would defeat all rulers, all authority, all power, including the unholy alliance, as well as Babylon, the system of the world. And we will see that Christ must reign uh, until he humbles all of his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. We see that the Lord Jesus will gain the victory uh, over uh, Satan and all of his enemies. We see that he will crush the enemy with his uh, foot and he will break his head and he is now a defeated enemy. He is though going prowling to see who he can devour. So uh, understand that, that all of your battles are not earthly battles, that they are spiritual battles in the spiritual realm and you need to gain the victory, pleading the blood of the lamb and claiming the victory that he has already won for us. The Lord Jesus, another portion that I wanted to connect, if possible, is uh, the con connecting between Genesis and Revelation, the Lion of Judah, the Lion of Judah. We see that the Lion represents power, fierceness, majesty, and kingship. We see the Lion is the king of the jungle, right? So the Lord Jesus needed to come from the tribe of David, a kingly tribe. And we look at the genealogy of both Matthew and Luke, and we see that Jesus... Uh, came from the line of David, from the tribe of Judah. So Jesus is the one who is the lion uh, of Judah. Amen. When Judah in Genesis blesses his son, he says to Judah, lion, you will be like a lion's cub and the specter and the ruler's staff will not depart from you until the Messiah comes and the obedience of all the nations shall be his. We see again a prophetic uh, uh, a messianic prophecy that is taking place in the Old Testament in Genesis that Judah from your line, uh, from your kingly line will come the person who will save the world, the savior of the world will come from your line and until that person comes and until he has a scepter and the ruler's staff that 
the, all the, and all the obedience of the nation shall be yours. Um, and and there, the devil has over the years tried to destroy that lineage, but we see that it, would, it took place in the Lord Jesus, that he fulfilled all of the prophecies, that he was in the line of Judah, that he came from the David line as well, and he was born in Bethlehem as was prophesied. And the father's son said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And we see that he won the victory for us. So Jesus is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. If you have nothing else to celebrate today, I want to tell you that, they, that you serve a living God that has defeated the enemy. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the Lion of Judah and heavens will always say, worthy, worthy, worthy are you living God. And that is a prayer that is always said in heaven. So Jesus got the victory as the last Adam in many different ways. In his silent years, without sinning and pleasing the Father, Jesus gained the victory. Uh, in his temptation by the devil, Jesus did not give in. And by the word that he quoted, he was able to gain the victory. In his public ministry, he never uh, failed. And we see that uh, he was still without sin despite many provocation. He never failed. Amen. In his crucifixion at the cross, fulfilling all the prophecies, redeeming all of mankind, he was able to gain the victory. Uh, as was promised, if I am lifted up, then all of mankind can be saved. And even fulfilling the prophecy that he would be crucified and hung, he fulfilled that prophecy and gained the victory over the devil. And then we see that in his uh, resurrection, he broke the power of death and the power of Satan that had fallen over humanity. And he was able to gain the victory over death. And now, uh, coming yet, in his second coming, he will have Satan bound and placed into the pit. And there will be a final victory of throwing him into the the lake of fire that will also take place after the millennial reign and so so many ways Jesus the last Adam has gained the victory for us so as as true believers in our lives who are delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and transformed into the kingdom of light we believe in a Lord that is victorious that has won every victory over Satan and he will uh, as uh, end time prophecies say gain the victory over Satan and will uh, who will be bound up for a thousand years and then will be thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever. As the worship team is coming up, uh, let me uh, try to conclude. The topics we had discussed is that the, that the Lord Jesus will crush the head of Satan. That he is a line of Judah that wins the battle and gets the ultimate victory. That the unholy trinity is destroyed forever and ever. And God's eternal kingdom is established forever and ever. And as children of God, we can stand as the victor and not as victims. We don't have to say that we're victims anymore because the Lord Jesus has won the battle for us. You know, as we're concluding, uh, I was thinking about a couple of songs and I couldn't decide, but I think the, the particular song that comes to mind is the Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. He's coming on the clouds. King of king, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken, hearted de broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our Lord is also the lamb, but the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. So as we jump to our feet to worship him, we need to give him the glory that is due unto his name. Oh, hallelujah, the lion and the lamb. Jesus Christ is worthy because he lived a perfect, sinless life, shedding his blood and defeating sin and death. And his death and resurrection has provided protection for his people that we would be with him in that eternal kingdom to those who honor and worship him. So will you all stand to your feet as we worship him, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty one, the line of Judah that has gained the victory over, de over uh, death, but also the victory over Babylon and the world system, the victory over the unholy alliance. He is the one worthy of all praise and honor. No one on earth deserves, his pra deserves our praise. No one deserves his praise that needs to go to him. Every mouth will confess 
Oh, as children of God living, we can live victorious, knowing that he has won the victory for us and that he has two more things to do, but he will defeat the enemy once and for all, and we will live with him in New Jerusalem forever and ever and ever. Amen.